Hi guys, um, so after I made my video on how to create a blog in uh, less than 10 minutes using Ruby on Rails, uh, you liked it very much, so I thought I'd make another one where I show you how to um, how to create a gem from scratch. A gem is a, is a, like a plugin for Ruby and Rail, uh, Rails projects and it's, uh, it's the ones you know from your project's uh, gem file. So and they are a great way of um, of sharing code between projects and a great way and the most used way to share uh, code between uh, Ruby projects. So what we'll start by doing is going to uh, GitHub and um, creating a, a new repo for the for the plugin. And we will just call this plugin Coolify. And I use uh, the the GitHub for for Mac client, and it's a it's a Git client for Mac that really helps when you uh, when you work with the GitHub projects. So I'll just click setup in desktop. So now I have I have an empty repo in my dev gems folder, um, and it's empty. So what we'll do now is use Bundler, and Bundler is like a, a dependency management tool for Ruby, that's also used by Rails, um, and we will use this to set up a basic gem structure. Just make sure that you have uh, Bundler installed. And just uh, write gem install bundler and, and press enter. I have it already installed, so I won't do it. Uh, I'll just run bundle gem and then the name of the gem. And I use sublime text, so I'll open it there. And as you can see, it has set up a basic gem structure, it has um, a version. This this file is what you will, uh, is a file. Th this file you'll edit when you uh, release a new version of your gem. For example, if you edit it and then uh, later on release it, then this is the version it will have on Ruby gems. Um, by default, when you require the Coolify uh, gem, if you write require Coolify in some Ruby project, then it will uh, require this file. Um, and this, this only, uh, right now it only requires the version file, but as you add more files, and we will do that later, then you, you write, for example, require coolify some other file. And then you can uh, create the file here in this directory and then uh, name it some other file and then it will, it will be required. So, the next, the next step is to um, is to open up the, the gem spec. It's, the, it's this file in your project folder and it has some it, it uses this uh, to set up the gem on Ruby gems uh, and, for example, display the summary and description. Uh, and it tells uh, Ruby gems which files are re uh, are required in this project. So uh, we will just write a short summary. This is the coolest gem ever. like this. And then you can see the test files. It, it specifies which files are used for testing your project. Um, and we'll be using a test unit. So I'll just um, remove the spec uh, and features files which are used by other test frameworks. Um, 
Now go to the to the rake file. We can try running rake, and it will not work because there are no um, there are no tasks in the rake file. You can see that uh, it that the 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 bundle gem command we ran before it has already uh, required some gem tasks from bundler and the the one task we will use from from the bundler gem tasks are the the task rake release which releases your gem to ruby gems tags the version on um, on github and so on uh, so it makes releasing uh, new versions of your gems gems uh, very easy so I like to um, to automatically run uh, the the test files when I when I run rake because this command um, will be run uh, many times during development, and uh, a reason why you should do testing is to make sure that when you collaborate with other developers, then then um, then you don't break each other's code because you write tests for every every uh, aspect of the plugin, and then when another developer rewrites something, then uh, he can just run the tests, and then uh, he is sure that that the tests um, that 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 he hasn't broken anything. So um, we will add a, a test task here. This file means that um, that when you run rake or rake test, then it will uh, use all of these these files uh, for testing. And uh, as you can see, it's all files uh, and all uh, directories in the um, in the in the test directory uh, that ends with uh, the underscore test dot rb. So. Now we should be able to run rake, but we haven't got a default task. Uh, we can run rake test, and it will run the test. But I like to uh, just be able to to run uh, to run rake uh, without anything else because it's a, the command that will we will use uh, all throughout all development. So we'll just create a default task like this. And it runs the tests. Um, now create a folder called tests. This will contain can contain all our test files. Create a test helper. This file will contain all initial setup for the for the test. So it you, uh, you we use this file to require test unit, and we will uh, require our gem. Also, so it's also always available in all tests. Um, then we will make uh, the actual test file. And as you can see, it has run uh, the test with our one assertion, which is the version here. And um, they, of course, they all passed. So, what we will do now is um, is create our actual uh, gem code. Um, 
and we will do uh, what what I want this uh, plugin to do is just take a uh, it extends the string uh, class and then it just replaces all uh, s's with uh, the c's like c and zebra um, I know this is very simple but I just want to 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 show uh, how it's done so So this opens up the string class. If you wanted to to create your own um, your own uh, classes, then you would do it like this: cool if, uh, just the module uh, and then the name of your gem, and then class some class. Then you would be able to call uh, coolify some class new like that. And that's the way it should be done. You 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 should always namespace your um, your classes and modules using the the module here, because if if an, if you do it like this, and another uh, plugin also has a, a class called some class, then there would be a, a conflict in the names. So always namespace your um, your classes and modules. But in, in this case, we will open up the, the string class and then just add a coolify method. We'll just replace S's with C's. So if I had been doing test-driven development, then, then I would have uh, written the test before and then uh, watch it fail and then implement uh, this method and then run it again and watch it pass, but um, we'll just uh, make the actual code before at first. Um, so now go to the Coolify test and we will replace this method. We don't want to test the version. Um, you need to um, name your test files with the uh, underscore test.rb and then your, your tests inside the actual test file should uh, begin with test underscore. This tells test unit that it's a test that it should run uh, when it's running tests. Um, so we'll just do it like this. What, what do I want to write? I didn't think of this. Um, we are just two cools like this. Coolify asset equal. We are just two cools like that. And then just uh, test it. And that's, you can see it uh, It doesn't recognize the method coolify uh, for this string. And that's because we haven't required this uh, this uh, string uh, file in, in, our, in our plugin. So we'll just require coolify string like this. Oh, and it's just too cool to be true, so I have another S here, like that. So, ah, another typo. So, and then now all our tests pass. Um, then we can actually say that our that our gem is finished. Um, so what we'll do now is um, publish it to GitHub. Um, and when you use GitHub for Mac, you can just uh, write the summary like this. Uh, I always use initial commit for my first commit. Like this. 
then usually there's a sync button right here but because this is our first comment then you, we have to go to branches and then click publish like this um, now because we have the the um, the, the bundler gen task in this file we can just run uh, rake release like this and it will re release the gem to uh, ruby gems and make it available to other developers using the version defined in, in this file and it's just um, it's just the, the initial version here just run rake release and as you can see it it builds the gem to a .gem file um, and it tags the 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 GitHub repo with the version from the version file. And that's actually uh, very useful because otherwise you'd have to do this manually. And it also, as you can see, pushes uh, directly to GitHub. And right now it's releasing. Yeah, it released uh, the Coolify gem to uh, rubygems.org. We can just uh, we can check out the Git repo just here. And um, check it out on. And Ruby gems. There you have your first. You'll have your first uh, gem released. So, um, so now you can you can go into your Rails project and um, and write. Uh, you just write gem, um, coolify or your gem name in your gem file, and then run bundle install, and then your your gem is um, is ready to be used in your Rails app uh, or another uh, app that uses uh, Bundler and that gem file. So the last thing I'll show you is just how to um, bump the version. And we could just say we wanted to upgrade to 1.5. Then we would uh, write a, a comment description from version, and we don't need to sync it because uh, the rake release task will do that for us. So that's it. Now your your um, your new version is available here um, from rubygems.org. So I hope this was uh, useful. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, please write a comment on YouTube, and I'll I'll try to get back to you. Thanks. Bye.